After the defeat of the Allied forces at Jitra, the Japanese 5th Infantry Division pursued the beleaguered defenders south on the 13th of December 1941. Confusion reigned as the Allies fell back, made worse by Japanese snipers. These men had infiltrated the rear areas wearing Malay dress and added to the chaos. At Alo Star, the bridges across the Kedo River were hastily prepared for demolition on the night of the 12th and the 13th. The railway bridge failed to fall and an armoured train was ordered to run over it to help collapse the structure. Unfortunately, the train jumped the broken rails and steamed off to the south. It finally reached Taiping before stopping. Soon after their arrival, the Japanese vanguard attacked across the Kedo River and only a counter-attack from the 2nd 9th Gurkha rifles drove them back. The British commander, Major General Murray Lyon, decided that the Allied troops were in no condition to stand and fight against an attack in strength and ordered the continual withdrawal south. This began on the evening of the 13th of December in driving rain and along packed roads. The rear battalion of 6th Brigade, the 1st 8th Punjab, were not able to cover the 20 miles until midday on the 14th, and when they arrived at Gurun they were hungry and weary. The Gurun position lay astride the main road south and the railway. On the west the Kedah Peak rose some 4,000 feet and the area to the east was covered in thick jungle. Gurun had been identified before the war as a defensive position and was to be prepared by civilian labour, but the speed of the Allied retreat meant that this just was not possible. Unfortunately for the tired troops arriving in the area, they had to begin digging in. 11th Division placed the 6th Brigade on the left covering the trunk road and the railway, with the right flank covered by 28th Brigade. 15th Brigade had been reduced to around 600 men was placed in reserve. Artillery support came from the 88th Field Regiment and three anti-tank batteries. The jungle, plantations and peak seriously restricted observation and the field of fire. At around 2pm on the 14th, the Allied troops had barely taken their positions when the first Japanese forces arrived at the crossroads in trucks. They were supported by three tanks. This was a great surprise to the defenders who thought that the destruction of the bridges to the north would have kept the armour out of the campaign for a few more days. The tanks were engaged by the anti-tank guns, one was hit, forcing the other two to withdraw. At 4pm, the reinforced Japanese infantry made an attack, capturing the crossroads and pushing into the 1st 8th Punjab. The Indians were shaky, but Brigadier Lay organised a counter-attack, leading it himself and restoring the position. Meanwhile, Murray Lyon was in a conference with Lieutenant General Heath, commander of the 3rd Indian Corps. Murray Lyon was arguing that his formations wouldn't last long fighting a piecemeal defence and requested that the retreat should be in longer bounds, using motor vehicles if possible. Heath agreed, but emphasised the need to hold the Japanese at the present position. Back at Gurun, Brigadier Lay planned a counter-attack by a company of the East Surreys to drive the enemy from the crossroads on the first light of the 15th. However, the Japanese barraged the Allied lines at 1.30am and drove an attack into the right of the 1st 8th Punjabs. They infiltrated deep into the 6th Brigade's area. The headquarters of 2nd East Surreys was overrun and the commanding officer was killed along with five other officers, along with the 6th Brigade headquarters being wiped out. Brigadier Lay only survived because he was absent from the headquarters. The commanding officer of the Punjabis believed that his right flank had been overrun and he was isolated from the East Surreys. He ordered the battalion to withdraw towards Yen and the coastal road. Taking a company of the East Surreys, the move left the trunk road and the western position completely undefended. Fortunately, Brigadier William Carpendale of 28th Brigade managed to hold the enemy around Gurun using his brigade and the 15th Brigade. On the morning of the 15th of December, Murray Lyon visited his forward brigades and immediately saw that the tactical situation was becoming untenable. He ordered a withdrawal immediately seven miles south of Gurun to a position held by the 1st Independent Company and a squadron of 3rd Cavalry. Only 28th Brigade could now be relied on as a fighting formation, and the entire division was withdrawn to the Mudda River during the night of the 15th and 16th. Fortunately, the Japanese did not pursue too closely, having taken heavy casualties in the fighting of the Keda Peak. Gurun was only a small action of the general retreat of the Allied army in Malaya, but it involved more loss of men and equipment and had a demoralising effect on the British and Indian soldiers as they were pushed south by the unseemingly stoppable Japanese invasion.